Um, so, uh, I would like to briefly introduce myself. Um, I'm Andre Braccaloni, I'm one of the four uh, partners of Leftsoft, which is a design studio. Um, I met my future partners in uh, 1993, when we were in university, and this is the shameless image of that time, just for a second. <laughs> Boom, that's it. <laughs> and, um, we were studying architecture. Uh, we were engaged in some, we had some quite strong political commitment. We wanted to become urban planners. And so we decided to open up a graphic design studio. <laughs> At, um, as chaotic as it may sound, actually was quite a natural evolution because in the beginning we rented one of our mom's warehouse because we needed for Studying architecture, we need the big space, big drafting tables, um, and uh, some room for doing uh, our stuff to do some party, of course. And, and so, uh, and, but graphic design came to the aid of us. Uh, basically, it was a nice way of paying the bills. So we started making little, little works of graphic design just to pay the bills because we were having fun and we were, uh, it, was, it was cool, you know, it was, it was okay. Uh, somebody told us we were quite good, we trust them. And fantastico. Um I can't go on. Um so we trusted them, so we tried to Vediamo se va. Yes. Ah, this is the the best pictures I found of that place. It was actually really a messy place, but this one were the best we had. Um, and so from, from that day on, when they told us we were good and we start doing every day more, we, try, we were practicing design every day, other, every night. I remember that those days were really crazy. We worked during weekends, summertime, not because we were years, but because we liked it. And uh, we were very, the second shameless picture is this one. This is us at that time working like mad people, you know. Okay, no more shameless uh, pictures. Um, so, um, and finally in uh, 1997, we made our choice and we established the, um, the studio. We made the company, we went to a very formal thing um, because we always said, I just said this thing in Italian because otherwise it's not understandable. We always said, dobbiamo fare uno studio legale, e invece, cioè per dire che dovevamo formalizzare il nostro studio, in realtà eh, c'era questo piccolo gioco di parole, non ci capivamo mai quando eravamo talmente confusi che magari qualcuno voleva fare anche l'avvocato, non si capiva. Comunque, um, anyway, then we established the, in 1997 the, the studio, we were 24, 25, something like that, and we started doing that. Now, after 17 years, um, everything has changed, of course, something is better, something is worse. I swear I had curly hair, I swear. Uh, but um, but the, the, the good thing that, uh, that, that, that is still there is that we are having quite a good time doing our job. Um, I remember one time when David and I, David is one of my partners, uh, one of the first time we were working like mad people but having, real, uh, having fun so much, laughing out loud, and all of a sudden we we, we realized that somebody was paying us for having such a good time. So it was a revelation because, of course, we were blessed of doing something that can, you know, can, which is your passion and matches with, uh, with things you have to do for a living. So we're absolutely lucky and blessed for that. Um, when uh, Laura called me to ask me to take part in this creative morning, so of course I was fluttered and, uh, and I enthusiastically accepted. Uh, the only little concern I had was about the topic. Um, I know I could talk also about something else, but I don't like to, to go 
too much of topic when uh, when I'm asked to, to do something. So uh, th that's why I, I put a question mark behind it. Not because I'm not too interested in minimal or on things like that, uh, but because I'm not that fond of style debates, you know, uh, or global design trends. I think when, uh, when it comes to design, those are the least interesting um, talks you can you can do. Okay, style is cool, it's nice. I'm, I I I love to watch letters for hours, for example. So it's a, a very formalistic approach, mine. But but I don't think it's that interesting to talk about minimalism as a as a style. Then after a while, I I thought a little deeper um, about the topic, and I realized that there is a, a very, of course, a very strong bound between minimalism and design uh, at large in general. You no. Know? because design is meant to deal with uh, uh, production, to optimize processes, um, to reduce somehow clutter in order to get more um, usable, uh, feasible things, uh, to make them more democratic somehow. Um, and, uh, uh, and so uh, design is about um, Reducing some, yeah, it's, a, it's about reducing, it's about optimizing processes and the outputs, of course. Um, there are guys like the, this one, which is Miss uh, Ludwig Miss van der Rohe, uh, of course, and his less is more lessons is, of course, very still, uh, is still interesting. And I think that the, and this lesson speaks to the, to, uh, to, to the core of design somehow. And uh, most of the things they said, of course, was and, as, and still are charming, and, uh, uh, and and I think that the last century was based that the, the the main ideology they diffused actually was the the one we won and uh, and the one we've been raised with. Um, but also, I think that uh, and and for example, that this little loop of of just a few examples of beautiful uh, modernist or minimalist uh, artifacts, I think that can, uh, of course, describe what, I, what I'm talking about. And as a designer, I've been, of course, a lot um, uh, fascinated by these kind of things. Uh, my, my concern is that um, it depends on the approach you have um, while, um, while doing these things. I think that the difference um, between talking about style, uh, talking about the essence of design is the approach you have toward, toward the project. I think that my concern about minimal is that um, it's cons always considered as a neutral approach. Uh, use uh, Helvetica, leave some blank space, use basic color, and that's you know, neutral, so you don't make any damage. So it's good for every, for every situation. Uh, my opinion is it's not like that. I mean, it's, I think that if, if I watch these beautiful things, actually they smell like modernism, okay? And it's a good smell, it's a good perfume, but, but it smells like a, a very specific period of time. So, um, so if we talk about style, I think it's not that interesting to talk about minimalism. And, not, and yeah, this is a guy that interprets the poem, maybe you know it punk posters with uh, minimalism, so they, there's a clash there. But anyway, uh, and, but I grew up during the 90s uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of my profession. And, and so I was, and in those days, everything was different. Like probably you know, um, the graphic design, but the visual arts in general and the world in general was changing so much. And there were guys like professional surfers like uh, David Carson uh, or uh, Neville Brody, which was idols at that time because they completely changed things. They were completely game changers, no? Um, and I grew up with that. And so since the beginning, I, I felt there was something wrong between the things that I've been taught in university. So modern movement was the main ideologic block, the, the, the basic design, all this stuff, Bauhaus, uh, and the things I was watching every day on the internet, on, on books, on uh, um, graphic design exhibitions, okay? Uh, I think uh, so. I think it's more interesting to to talk about um, minimal when it comes to uh, mm, when we're talking about the approach you can have <clears throat> toward a project. So there are certain situations where um, where to have um, a minimalistic minimal approach, it's preferable instead of having a big narration of big uh, emphatic things. 
uh, and and if you have a minimalist uh, approach to, to the project, it makes sense to have to to to, to, to this leads to to uh, minimal solutions somehow. The rules we set was very very plain. Um, uh, the idea behind it uh, that was the one that made us uh, win the competition uh, for uh, taking the assignment was actually very uh, very simple um, and uh, more than. Uh, M rather than being um, a, a style choice was uh, again a, a, an approach because for those of you who doesn't know uh, documenta 13 uh, was um, is documenta is uh, an, um, a contemporary art exhibition that takes place in Germany in Kassel every five years uh, and it's considered one of the most important in the world so um, when you deal with uh, with art you really have to yeah, you really have to um, to understand that your work has somehow to disappear. You have to have the most humble, most humble, most humble approach possible in order to to be there, do your stuff. But you have to enlighten other people's work. Okay, and uh, and when it comes to art in particular, you know there might be some clashes because of course they do visual stuff, most of them, and and so you have to be there, but. Uh, you have absolutely have to avoid this kind of uh, crashes. So the very simple idea, but I think yet powerful, was to take the um, the name of the exhibition and change it. In, a, in more than doing a, a logotype, we did a logogram, like uh, like uh, you can define it. So the the very simple stuff was to change to reverse the hierarchy between the upper and lowercase letters, which is quite uh, stronger in Germany because, as you might know, um, nouns in Germany, in German, are always capitalized, also when they are not in the beginning of a sentence. So um, with this very simple uh, idea, I think we could be able to, to design this very weak brand image and to make a little system that can reproduce itself without big asshole, you know, big, uh, big stuff. Of course, we define a, a typographic palette. There are, you know, eye hand uh, typefaces and very cheesy ones, like uh, the one I love the most probably, which is Cooper Black or Impact. Uh, but each one of them has been uh, accurately uh, defined with the curator, Caroline Christoph Bakargiev, uh, which was, I can say she's a, probably a genius. Uh, this is my little experience with her. Um, and, and there is a story behind, uh, we show a, a, a wider um, typographic palette range and she picked the, the ones that had the better story to tell. They were um, better, con it was more consistent with the work uh, she, she was doing as a curator of Documenta 13. So uh, we did the logogram, we did a, a very few, uh, a, a very wide uh, typographic palette and then we, we pick uh, uh, the saturated color palette, again to to be there, but to be consistent, to be recognizable, but without adding too much clutter, too much too much noise onto the um, onto the communication. Uh, for us, uh, this was a very important project, also because um, the um, this very simple set of rules we set um, uh, had to be. Um, uh, had to be uh, declined on onto a, a wide range of artifacts and, um, and and stuff. And our studio, since the beginning, always tried to keep the the range of its services as wide as possible. And uh, in this case, we had the chance to to experiment all of them all together, which was uh, quite unusual. So. And it's of course one of our objectives. So one of our goals is always uh, is, is always to 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 be as as more uh, present as possible uh, uh, within the project. And so, without um, uh, makes this too much boring. But of course, we did the brand image with the stationery and all this usual stuff. Um, we. Uh, we actually designed uh, uh, lots of catalogs because uh, with an exhibition like this, of course, there's a lot of stuff to, 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 to do. In particular, we designed 104 
little catalogs, uh, each one, uh, one for each uh, artist or curator or writer or people involved by Caroline in the in in, in the in, in Documenta, which is a, an exhibition, which is also um, a place where you do research. Okay, so uh, during the three months of opening, stuff has been done there, right there. So it's uh, it's a very important moment for contemporary art. Uh, and so for which each one of them we design all these catalogs. It was actually the, the work last for, the project last for uh, two years and a half, something like that. And finally in June 2012, it, uh, they were the opening. And also the, you see the, all the, all the um, artifacts there are quite consistent and in the inside covers there are little things hidden which are memories from previous documenta or uh, important again for the curator so uh, basically if you open up all the booklets you can uh, just oppose them and find new stuff coming out so there are little hidden things like like this okay and then of course we we did uh, the the main catalog which is the more uh, you know uh, usual stuff you do for exhibition but this is 800 pages long the logbook, which is a diary of the making of, of the exhibition, and then the guidebook, because I don't know if some of you has been to 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 to, to Castle, but it's if you spend there two, three, or four days, very nice because it's like a treasure hunt, no? So you need that guidebook to find because Castle is not a big city, but it's a city, so you have to find the the artworks, you know, that are uh, spread all around the city, and so you have to really uh, find uh, little treasures of. Uh, little artworks there or performances or sculptures or any kind of, of interesting thing. So you really need that guidebook. And these are some spreads from, from, the, from the catalogs again. Of course, we also had to tackle the digital thing. So we did a website. <coughs> um, I don't want to annoy you with the details about the website, but there are you know, several areas of the research, the information things that are like overlapping pages. And we also designed the app. Looking at it now, it looks really cheesy, but I mean, it was working. Um, and of course, there were the advertising around the city and uh, onto, onto art publications and stuff. So again, have you seen, this is, I think, the most minimal approach you can have, it was just stating that was one art exhibition in Castle from here to there, and that's it. So this is the minimum, you know, we could be able to, the minimum hint of information. And somehow it worked because also in informal uh, stuff like the kiosk there, you see that they use the same logogram we did for ice creams and snacks and dot chairs, I don't know what it is, but uh, so I think it actually worked. And, uh, and if you, and when I went there for, uh, for the first time, it was incredible to see how our work was spread all around the, the, the place, but without, actually worked. So it's not me that I have to say this, but I think it worked because it was there without being too much, uh, too much, uh, too much invadente, uh, protagonist, non mi viene la parola. Tanto siete tutti italiani, che parliamo in inglese. <laughs> ok, uh, the second project I would like to talk to you um, is uh, Inter, Inter Football Club. Um, not only because for us it's a very important one, but also beca because it has the, a completely uh, different approach from the previous one. Um, and I think this um, underlines the, the thing that I was saying in the beginning. So, which is that style, like Sackmeister said, that style is fart. It's not elegant, but I think it's uh, quite interesting because in this case, we had a completely different approach and the, diff uh, the completely different approach led to different solutions. Okay, so it's not that I, I'm minimalist and any project I do, it's minimalist. Uh, for me, it's completely nonsense, okay? In this case, as you probably know, uh, you have to, um, it's a, a football team is very important thing for people and for old, for young, for uh, uh, it, it, it goes across classes 
uh, and it probably talks to, speaks to the, more to the stomach of people uh, than their minds, otherwise nobody would care about football probably. And I have the same disease, so I can understand perfectly what I mean. And um, it, it was a surprise to realize that despite it's not a big company, I mean, the, the revenues are not that big, okay, are big, but not that much. It's a really, it's a global brand. And we discovered that there are fans all over the world. And um, in China, for example, there are people that are crazy for, for Inter. And this was really uh, a discovery for us. So um, what we tried to do here uh, was to, uh, to talk to people's hearts somehow, to, to, be, um, uh, to be more delicate and to uh, underline some values that we found interesting, which were somehow heroism, uh, some to, but um, yeah, to, to, to consider players, the, 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 the brand and, uh, and all the things as uh, heroic. And when we start working for them, it happened three years ago, uh, Inter just won anything, everything. So it was really true, especially in that moment. Uh, but what we tried to do was, uh, trying to avoid any glitter or uh, hyper-technological feature or uh, super fluorescent stuff um, like uh, most of sports brands does. And, and we try to be more uh, calm down and, 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 and to be inspired by other situations. I don't know why this picture is here, but it's okay. <laughs> this is a picture taken from the Empire State Building. It was not supposed to be here, but it's okay. So um, one of the references we had was uh, English football because, of course, it has a, a longer tradition than ours, and there were uh, habits that um, that um, we found really nice, like having the match day booklet. So every day, every time you go to a game. You receive this little booklet with uh, some, some of the statistics, some articles, and some story behind the match we were going to, to, to watch. And so we did the same. Uh, first of all, we did, um, we did the, the subscription campaign. Ci vediamo a San Siro, see you in San Siro. Uh, and as you can see, we tried to convey this, uh, the values I was mentioning before, uh, which, is, which is, so, so we try to be as heroic as possible without any glitter, without but very straight to the point. And these were the bags. So again, uh, I think you've got the main points of, of, of this project. This was celebrating all the stuff that Mourinho won. And this is another um, uh, campaign. Same for Inter. Again, it's uh, taken from, from some quotation, uh, I think from a previous president or something like that. Again, this is the third row of, of the same uh, kind of artifact. So for each match. And again, uh, it, it took, I think, two years, but we did finally the website. Uh, the supporters were very happy about this. We are, we are happy, of course, at, uh, about this website, but in two years, it got a little old. So it's OK. It works in comparison with the previous one, uh, which was actually quite terrible, I think it's a good starting point. So, um, but again, this is a, uh, a big task for us because as you can imagine, the, the, amount, the amount of stuff that um, a football team has to communicate is a lot. So, and we do everything they communicate is done by us. So <coughs> we, we, we did a special team uh, just for the purpose. Uh, and of course, as you can imagine, there is a bunch of stuff for the, like uh, this is the U.S. summer tour they did where the previous picture out of sports was taken. These were the shirts done for that. This is another picture taken from the, by Fabrizio Ferri, taken from the, uh, from the Empire State Building. Um, and there are stuff like that also, like uh, Crociera Nera Azzurra. You can't miss it. Uh, or uh, Vacanza Nera Azzurra in Sardinia, stuff like that. And also, best wishes for Merry Christmas. Uh, 
And the, the, and the last one thing I, I would like to tell you about this is merchandising because, uh, and this is one of the, because the two things I cannot show you now, but I can, uh, tell, uh, we rebranded the, the, the logotype and all the communication system, so, but it has to be presented next month, so I cannot show you yet. And the other big thing we did was to harmonize all the, as you can imagine, merchandising, it's a key, um, it's a key business point for a, for, a, for, a, for a football team, no? So, but the problem is that there are, uh, the licenses are, are given away like, like that, you know, and there are no design rules, so everybody could do anything. So there are all sorts of little puppets or umbrellas horrible, some are red or stuff like that, or written with the strange typefaces. So we actually produce 16 guidelines with different uh, style guides uh, and, and spread to, to the guys with the licenses. And now they are harmonizing everything. So in the very next future, every little puppet or thing produced uh, with, a, with a brand inter on top of it will be somehow coordinated. So it's, it's been a, a big effort for us, like bicycles and stuff like that. Okay, we are almost there. Uh, any question, any comment, nothing? You're just writing here, stuff? Okay, uh, the, the, the last thing I would like to talk to you um, is Etica, which is a typeface, uh, and, uh, and a very old one for us. Uh, but I would like to talk to you about this because, not only because I'm, uh, I, um, I care, especially care about this because it stole my green years, uh, evenings uh, uh, so much when I was much younger, but also because I think um, it's uh, again a little, um, a, a little um, thought about the minimal thing we were talking before. Um, in fact, as I was saying, um, like every designer, probably, I had a crash on Helvetica, like everybody. But uh, crash doesn't mean that, doesn't mean love, necessarily. So I have a strange relationship with this typeface um, because I'm a nerd, so I, I, you know, I have this kind of feelings toward a, a typeface. Because I liked it very much, especially during the 90s when it was a little tight, with, uh, with the spacing a little tight, and it was so cool that but I didn't want to use it because everybody was using it, but I liked it, so it was a strange uh, relationship. So I tried to do my own version, of course, like everybody tried to do it, but in the beginning it was 99. And, uh, and we did Etica, which as you can see, it's, it, it tries to, to have the same uh, impact, but it doesn't, because in the end it doesn't at all. But uh, I was a little bit pissed off because it was not looking like uh, as cool as Helvetica was uh, looking. But in the end, it was, of course, a good thing because it had its own somehow personality. And, and I'm showing you this not because it's important or it's uh, beautiful or stuff like that, but because it's, um, again, uh, an effort to, to move on, to move on from, uh, from the things I've been taught, you know, to, to the things uh, I've learned while I was in university because, okay, I study architecture, but the main, the main things I've studied actually are uh, I experience them every day while doing uh, the work of a designer. So, and this was the little story uh, behind it, which, of course, it's a joke. So it's, uh, we invented that Helvetica was, Elvin Detica was married somehow, but he was a tyrant or uh, an asshole, if you prefer. And, and all of a sudden, she, she set herself free. And, uh, and it's a joke, of course, but um, it tells you more about the, the design or, or something because uh, actually it's a more cheerful typeface as Marta can uh, confirm, right? Okay, thank you. How much is it? <laughs> okay, uh, it's a more cheerful, it has open uh, um, endings. Uh, it's, uh, in the end, it works, somehow it works, but it's not at all like Helvetica, you know. And, and again, I think it, Helvetica is beautiful, but it smells like modernism. It smells like things that are not here anymore. That's why I'm, uh, I try to, so especially with students, when we talk about this kind of issues, uh, to tell them, use it, absolutely, do whatever you want, but do it with some, 
some, uh, some awareness uh, because it's, it's not neutral at all for me. This is my opinion. Okay. Um, these are some silly weights and um, I don't remember what I wanted to say anymore, but I think it's, and this, uh, I leave you with this uh, loop of stupid fake advertising we did because we don't have the money to make advertising, of course. And, uh, and so you see it's a quite flexible typeface. You can use it any, in any situation. Thank you, that's it. Okay. No, perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. So now it's time for some questions. Mm -hmm. Do you have any? Hello. Um, I was just wondering, because you have a quite broad range of clients from all different types of industries. Do you have... Just two. Two, you just saw two, two. clients. <laughs> two different, very different clients. Do you have some kind of um, guidelines or criteria that helps you choose who you work with? Or... Is it more about mm. kind of instinct? You would be beautiful. Can you hear me? You would be beautiful to pick the clients you want. Of course, you can do. Uh, you can pick some out the clients you want, uh, but you just do it. At least this is our experience by saying no to the ones you don't want. So it's the opposite. Uh, 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 and actually, I have to be sincere. We don't do new business that much you know we don't do actions towards getting new clients that much okay we meet people we talk to people we try to be as nice as possible uh, we brush our teeth and this stuff but uh, we don't have specific actions we do because fortunately with the word of mouth or because you have experience in a in a previous with the with a similar project or something like that uh, it's always the best way to get new clients but I think you can pick clients by saying no to, to the ones you don't want to do. But it takes time. You know, we started doing this in the last three or four years, five years. Because in the beginning, you have to pay the bills, you have to uh, earn experience and all this stuff. Um, but, um, but, um, but in the end, you, you, you kind of really uh, decide uh, the guys you, you work with. And also, I think, we are not that big. We are 22 people in the studio, so we are not Frog, okay? And uh, and uh, but I think also in Frog it's important the 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 direct relationship you have with the people you work with. So you really need to have a good mood, good uh, relationship with them. Otherwise, you know the the outcomes are always bad. And the experience, and I think. Uh, uh, you have to design better experience for your customers, of course, but, and, uh, and for the audience of your customers. But also the experience that your clients are having with you is important. So it's, it's, it's always important. And if the experience is not good, it's not going to last. That's in my experience. Any other comment, question? Um. Hi. because my question is not uh, about your beautiful talk, but uh, maybe it's about the beginning. And I would like to know what do you think that it was easier to open a design studio in 1997, 1993, mm -hmm. uh, or easier now, and what your best advice you can give to someone okay. who actually wants to open a business in Italy, for sure. Okay, I just opened one studio in 1997, so I just know what was happening there. I think now it's, I don't know actually, I think, okay, the general economic situation, it's crisis and all these things, so uh, probably it's not, and, 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 I, and I think that when we opened up the studio, it was a little easier because there were less graphic designers around, less designers around, because there was no faculty, there was no schools really, I mean, there were, but there are spin-offs of architecture or uh, product design, all these kind of things. Now it's more, um, I think it could be the same. I think it could be, you can op open up your studio now. Uh, 
the only thing that you have to pay attention to is that it takes time, a lot of times. So, for example, we, I just work there. I don't have any other experience in any other studio. If I would have it, I would probably avoid it lots of mistakes. The other one was the way you get, you organize the studio. We changed 10 times. Now I think we found a way to, 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 to but it's an ever changing situation because the more people you get, the more important the projects uh, are, the, the different uh, the, the organization has to be. So this is the second way. It took ages for us to understand what was best. Um, and the third thing is to go out. As I told you, even for we were hanging in front of the, of the window, uh, we were really working like uh, slaves, I think, for five years. I, I was skinny, really, I was skinny, I got fat because I was having mojitos every night and, and pizza like this in front of the computer, smoking 2,000 cigarettes a minute. So, uh, but I think, so you have to, you have, we are self-taught, so we had to learn, we had to, and we were having so much fun that we were doing, you know, because we wanted. But in the end, the more you get out, the more you meet people, the more you you work with people different from you, the better you get. The more interesting person you are, the more uh, you know, the more other possibility that you can do something interesting. Since design doesn't cure bad diseases or stuff like that, you have to have fun and do good stuff. Otherwise, it's nonsense. If you have to do, you know, your cousin love attack, do it for free and do the lawyer. Okay, you received some critics about Madre Logo. They were just a little bit. Yeah, just a yeah, but they were done not by really important people in my opinion, because I was on those Facebook groups. But I'd like to understand what is for you the border between laziness and minimal, because probably that was they thought that just underlining a logo was the simpler approach to make to make it. You use times too long for making a logo. How come? And it was not time to roll, so that was the, the, the most common method. Um, if you notice it, we didn't reply to any of, of those things. Not because we are that snobbish, or, but because, you know, well, it's like, um, you know, it's not like football and everybody has an opinion about it. I mean, it's okay, you can have your opinion if you're free to do it. Uh, but there were people in front of the museum throwing stuff to the museum, you know, stuff like that, it was crazy. And a lot of lies were, has been said, so I don't know if I can say them exactly, so, because this is almost public, so I can tell you later, but if you want. After the thing, I tell you exactly what happened. But I think between laziness and, uh, and minimalism, I think it's really, there is, it's a stupid point, if I may say. Because uh, the idea there, uh, the Madre Museum, it's, a, it's a, muse a contemporary art museum in Naples. And basically what we did uh, was to make it yellow. That was the big point. But once uh, our Tribune uh, website came out with a very low resolution GIF and said, do you like the previous or before logo type? You know, it's been paid 2,000, and, and they are from Milano. Everybody was screaming like crazy people because they're from Milano, because it's Times New Roman, which is not Times New Times Roman, of course, most Stanley, by the way. And, um, and actually, I think we did some, I think it's a, it's a smart project because we, yellow is the color of the city, we make everything yellow, we, and, 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 the, and, the, and the spaces inside are total white, completely white. So we actually use the yellow as the inside, inside the flesh of the museum. And we, again, like something like we did for Documenta, it was done later on, uh, we, we, we have hidden uh, some images of the city, of the nature of the city, inside the stuff, so inside the envelopes, behind the letterheads, uh, uh, behind uh, the business cards, behind the articles. So I think we did a, a powerful, super recognizable, and really straightforward work that I think you need some I don't want to be an asshole, okay? But I think you have you, you need some experience to do such a simple thing. And laziness is not a point because we work like this for six months, okay? Six people work like this for six months. We make a catalog, a lot of stuff. So I think it, 
those critics are really nonsense. But I mean, I, mean, uh, I would be happy to talk with some of them sooner or later. You know, most crazy. Nobody record, sorry. Does it work? Yeah. No. Um, I how did you? <coughs> How have you seen um, the design world change with the um, like the explosion of the internet in terms of skills and sharing of information and even sharing of opinions? Um, how have you seen your fields change and in what ways has it surprised you? Okay, uh, it has completely changed uh, in terms of main ideology. I think we talked about it, so it changed. I'm I'm, I'm not one for talking about these big issues, but we, we've been from modernism to postmodernism, which doesn't mean nothing, but anything, I mean, everything was possible, like we said. Uh, we are the first generation of people that start working with computers. We are the very first ones, because I remember that in the beginning of university, I had the drafting table, and during university, I started working with the CAD, uh, this kind of thing. So, when we opened up the studio, we were completely digitalized, even if the internet was you know, you know. very slow. But, um, but it was there. I mean, it was in the beginning. So it changed, I think, completely. I had uh, uh, a friend of mine working with me in Polytechnico. He's 55, 58, so it's 15 years more than me. And he always tell, tells me stories about how was the profession before the computer. It was really crazy, as you probably know. Uh, there were photo composition. There were, uh, there were uh, photo composition, there were really crazy stuff. For example, if you need to make the design of a magazine, uh, you had to conceive the ideas you had. So I want to use Times New Roman, 10 points on 12. Uh, the, the text grid would be 12 pictures and stuff like that. Then you call the guy in the print shop, you tell the, 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 the characteristics you need, and then the day after you receive transparent piece of paper where you put it on the on the lighting table and say, mm, I don't like it. You know, 11 points on 12, <laughs> like this. So it was crazy. And I think, but I mean, they were, and they, they, they were able to do beautiful stuff. So uh, the technique changes the way you work. The, the tools you use changes the outputs, absolutely. But it's so ever-changing that, yeah, it changes every day. On the internet especially, it's, uh, it's uh, incredible. I told you about the Inter website. When we did it for the first time, it was quite okay. It was sort of but it got old very quick because time has changed, and, but everything has changed. The profession of the type design has changed completely. The photographic design changed completely, and and of course the this global uh, agora where people exchange opinion. It's absolutely good. So. Uh, in the past, when uh, there were the Swiss school, uh, Swiss Lombardy schools, there were international style, there were stuff, you know, you, you went to an exhibition and you learned stuff, you learned things. You went to Poland and you learned there were beautiful poster designers there.